Okay, so in this next question, we're asked to refer to the figure and find the volume generated by rotating the given region about the specified line. And they want us to rotate this line R about OA. So right here, you can see that I've drawn a kind of uh, a Cartesian coordinate plane almost, but I've only drawn this little section of it. So it goes from 0, 0 to 1, 0 and also to 0, 1. And so we've got our point O at 0, 0, our point A at 1, 0, our point B at 1, 1, and our point C at 0, 1. And it wants us to rotate R about the line formed by OA. So if we were to rotate R, it would look something like this. We would just go an equal distance uh, below the x-axis. So maybe something like right here is what I would say, like this. That actually might be a little bit too much maybe something like this. And so now we have this solid of revolution that we've formed and we can see that if we were to rotate it, if we were to imagine rotating it, it would look like a disk. It would look something like this. Uh, that was a better representation, but yeah, it would look like a disk like that. So we know we're going to be using the disk method to integrate. So when I write that down, I'm going to write volume equals the integral. And because we're only from 0 to 0 and 1 to, because we're on the interval 0, 0 to 1, 0 and 0, 0 to 0, 1, right, we're only moving one point in each direction. I know for sure that my uh, lower and upper bounds of integration are going to be 0 and 1 no matter what because we don't go into x equals 2 or y equals 3 or anything like that. Now I'm going to be integrating with respect to y so it's going to be from 0 to 1 of the area function represented by x dx. Now when I go to write that that's going to be from the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times the radius squared dx. And now, even though they don't give us the equation for r, we have no choice but to assume that the equation is y equals x, because that's what it looks like. It looks like it has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept is 0. So uh, for this problem, you have to assume that the line r is given by the equation y equals x. So I'm going to write that the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times x squared. Our radius is given by... Oh, I put that wrong. Pi times x squared. Our radius is going to be given by this line minus the line that we're rotating it around. And the reason it's r minus that line, r minus OA, is because r is above OA. If r was below OA, then it would be OA minus r. And because OA is just 0 in terms of x, it's x equals 0, or not x equals 0, it's really y equals 0. But because it's just a baseline, it's just going to be like x minus nothing. It's just an axis. So that's why I have x squared. And then dx to follow. Now I'm going to bring out the pi from the integral. So I have pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. And now I can evaluate this integral. So that's going to be pi times one third x cubed from the interval 0 to 1. And now I'm not going to evaluate it at 0 because that's 0 would just be 0 so it wouldn't affect the equation. But at 1 it would be pi times 1 third times 1 cubed. 1 cubed is just 1 so it's pi times 1 third which is pi over 3. So that would be your answer for that one. So in this next question, we're asked to do the same thing, except now they want us to rotate r about ab. And as you can see, ab is the line formed by these two points right here. So if I were to go ahead and make a rough uh, sketch about what rotating it about that line would look like, it would probably be something like this. So it goes down like that. And then you have this solid of revolution here. And as you can see, if I draw the circle here, 
it is another disk shape. So when I go to find the volume of this, I'm going to be uh, integrating it with respect to uh, with respect to y. So this is going to be the volume, the integral from zero to one of the area function with respect to y dy. And now our area function is going to be this line, which is given by x equals 1, minus this line, which is given by uh, y equals x, or x equals y, if we're defining it in terms of y. So it would be uh, volume equals the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times the radius, which as I just said is 1 minus y squared dy. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring the pi out. And so I'm going to have volume equals pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of uh, 1, 1 minus, and then this is going to be 1 minus 2y plus y squared. And if you're wondering where that comes from, I just uh, expanded this thing out here. So 1 minus y squared is the same thing as 1 minus y times 1 minus y. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 minus y is negative y. Negative y times 1 is negative y. And then negative y minus y is negative 2y. And then uh, negative y times negative y is positive y squared. So that's where those come from. And then when I evaluate this integral, it's going to be pi times y minus y squared plus one third y cubed from zero to one and then when I evaluate that that's going to give me pi times one minus one squared plus one third one cubed and then if I simplify that, that's going to be pi times 1 minus 1 plus 1 third. This 1 and minus 1 is going to cancel out, leaving me with pi times 1 third, which is just pi over 3. So that would be your answer for that one. Okay, so in this next question we're asked to do the exact same thing, except now we're asked to rotate the region R2 about OA. So as you can see, I've drawn this new curve here, which is given by y equals the cube root, or not the cube root, the fourth root of x. And the region R2 is the region between the curve and then also like this, the line formed by OC and CB. And so uh, we're asked to rotate that region about OA. So if we were to do that, it would look something like this. It would go down all the way like this, and something like this. Kind of, we're rotating this like ramp type shape right here. And now, as we can see, we have a washer shape. I'm going to try to draw it, but it's going to be messy because there's a lot of like labeling in the way. So it's, we're going to have like this shape right here, and then we also have this thing right here, this inner radius, which gives us our washer shape. I, I hope that looks okay. I know it probably doesn't, but... So when I go to integrate this, I will be integrating from 0 to 1, and I'm going to be integrating with respect to the x-axis so a of x dx and this is a washer shape so we're going to be using our washer method so we're going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared and then dx to denote that we're integrating with respect to x. So the outer radius is actually going to be given by just 1 uh, because it's this line up here is given by 1 and this line is 0 so 1 minus 0 is 1. So we're gonna have the integral from 0 to 1 
of pi times 1 squared minus pi times, and then our inner radius is uh, given by the cube root of x minus 0, which is just the cube root of x. So it's going to be cube root of x squared. And now cube root of x may seem challenging at first, but all that you have to remember is, I'm mean, not the cube root, the fourth root. All that you have to remember is that the fourth root of x is the same thing as x to the one fourth. And when we have an exponent raised to an exponent like this, it's the same thing as multiplying. So two times one fourth is like saying x to the two fourth, which is just x to the one half. So I can rewrite this as, and then I'm going to factor out a pi and bring it behind or on the outside of the integral. So it's going to be pi times the integral from 0 to 1, and then 1 squared is just 1. So it's 1 minus square root of x, because remember we said it was x to the 1 half, and x to the 1 half is the same thing as square root of x, dx. And now I can go ahead and evaluate this integral. So this is going to be pi times x, and when we find the integral of this, uh, it might be easier to draw off to the side what's happening here. So, like I said, the square root of x is the same thing as this x to the 1 half. And when we integrate, we're doing like the reverse derivative. So we want to say, like, my end product, if I take the integral of, or if I take the derivative of that, it should be this the square root of x. So when we take the derivative, we always subtract by we always subtract the number that's in the exponent by one. So if we're doing the reverse of that, we would add what's in the exponent by one. So we would be doing one half plus one, which is the same thing as uh, one half plus two halves. I wrote that wrong. It should be one half plus two halves. And then, so that's going to give us x to the 3 halves, right? But we're not finished yet, because if we were to take the derivative of this, we would get 3 halves x to the 1 half. And we don't have a 3 halves here. We just, we have nothing. So we have to find a coefficient that when we bring this 3 halves down, it will result in it being 1. And we'll find that that number would be 2 thirds. Because when you bring the 3 halves down, they would uh, cross reduce to be 1. And then you do 3 halves minus 1, which is 3 halves minus 2 halves, which is 1 half. All that to say that when we take the integral of this, it's going to be x minus 2 thirds x to the 3 halves on the interval 0 to 1. Now I can go ahead and evaluate this. So that's going to be pi times. 1 minus 2 thirds times 1 cubed and I'm going to skip the 0 step where we plug in 0 because that would just be 0 minus 0 which is 0 so we'd get pi times 1 minus 2 thirds which is the same thing as pi times 3 thirds minus 2 thirds and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this up here, which is the same thing. 3 thirds minus 2 thirds is 1 third. So we have pi times 1 third, which is pi over 3. So that would be your answer for that one. Okay, so in this next question, we're asked to do the exact same thing, except now we're asked to rotate the region R2 about the line formed by the two points A, B. So in order to do that, we're going to go over one unit like this and then we're also going to go up one unit like this and so when we go to draw this region when we go to ro uh, rotate the region it's going to look something like that and then once again we can see that we have another washer for example if I were to draw a washer shape it would look like this so we'd have the outer radius being right here and then the inner radius would be right here. 
So I'm going to integrate this with respect to y. So I'm going to have volume equals the integral of 0 to 1 of the a of y function dy. And because this is a washer, we're going to be use the, using the washer method. So we're going to have, I drew that integral really poorly, hold on. The integral from 0 to 1 of pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared dy. So our outer radius is actually be going to be it's going to be given by one because this line is uh, is our kind of line of revolution I suppose we're we're uh, revolving the the shape around uh, we're revolving the region rather around this point right here which is at one and this point is at zero so it's one minus zero which is just one so it's going to be the integral from zero to one of pi times 1 squared minus pi times the inner radius and the inner radius uh, is given by 1 minus this curve right here which is the fourth root of x but if we're defining it in terms of y it's actually going to be y to the fourth so it's going to be 1 minus y to the fourth squared dy so now I'm actually going to pull a pi out of this whole thing and I'm going to have pi times integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus and then we have to foil this out here so it's going to be 1 minus y to the fourth times 1 minus y to the fourth so that's going to be 1 minus uh, 2y to the fourth plus y to the eighth. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and put it in this integral right here. So it's going to be 1 minus 2y to the fourth plus y to the eighth, and then dy. Now I can go ahead and simplify this as pi times integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus 1 plus 2y to the fourth plus y uh, minus y I mean minus y to the eighth and I just got that by distributing the negative 1 and then we, uh, we bring down our dy so this 1 and negative 1 are going to cancel out here leaving me with pi times the integral of zero, from 0 to 1 of 2y to the 4th minus y to the 8th. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase everything that's up here. So make sure you had it written down. And then I'm going to rewrite this as uh, I'm going to evaluate the integral now, so it's going to be pi times this is going to be y to the fifth and then we want something that's going to cancel out and just leave a 2 behind when we drop that 5 down so after some trial and error you should realize that that's 2 fifths if we drop down the 5, the 5 and the, the 5 that's dropped down and the 5 in the denominator are going to cancel out leaving us with 2 and we do 5 minus 1, which is just 4, leaving us with the 2 y fourths that we had down here. So that's going to be 2 fifths y to the fifth minus 1 ninth y to the ninth. And that's going to be in the interval 0 to 1. And again, I'm going to be skipping the 0 step because that would just result in a 0, which wouldn't affect our, our problem. So we're going to have pi times two-fifths times one to the fifth minus one-ninth times one to the ninth. 
So when we go ahead and evaluate this, 1 to the 5th is just 1, and 1 to the 9th is just 9. So that's going to give us pi times 2 fifths times 1 minus 1 ninth times 1. And then when we multiply 2 fifths by 1, we're going to be left with 2 fifths. So we're going to have 2 fifths, and then 1 ninth times 1 is 1 ninth. So we have 2 fifths minus 1 ninth. And now in order to subtract these, I'm going to get like denominators. So I'm going to multiply 2 fifths by 9 in the numerator and the denominator, and I'm going to multiply 1 ninth by 5 in the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to have pi times 18 40 fifths minus 5 40 fifths. And then when I go ahead and subtract this, I'm going to have uh, pi times 13 40 fifths, meaning our final answer is 13 pi over 45. And that would be my final answer for that one. Find the volume generated by rotating the given region about the specified line. And we're asked to rotate the region R3, which would be this shaded area right here, and we're asked to rotate it about the line formed by the two points OA. So if we're going to do that, uh, this point right here is on 0, 0, so it's already on the line. All you need to do is rotate this down, and so it'll look like that. And this would be our uh, rotated version of, this would be our rotated version of this line right here. And then this curve here, which is given by y equals the fourth root of x, would also be rotated like that. And now we can see here, if I pick uh, any point here and draw what that revolution would look like, we can see we have this revolution here of the y equals x. And then we have this second revolution here of the y equals fourth root of x. And we can see through that that we actually have a washer shape. So I'm going to be using the washer method to find the volume. So that's going to be the volume equals the integral from 0 to 1. And I'm going to be integrating with respect to x. So I'm going to write a of x dx. So then we can rewrite that and uh, actually define our area function. So that's going to be pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared. This should be an r. Inner radius squared dx. So now when we go to find our outer and inner radius, uh, we can see that our outer radius is given by this uh, fourth root of x. And because it's being subtracted by this line, which lies on basically 0, it's going to be 4th root of x minus 0, or just 4th root of x. So pi times the 4th root of x squared minus pi times the inner radius, which is given by y equals x. And again, it's above this line, which is at 0 here. So this is going to be pi times x squared dx. Now I'm actually going to move the pi symbol out of the integral. So it's going to be pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of uh, fourth root of x squared minus x squared dx. And now I can go ahead and evaluate this even further. And I can write it's equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 1. And then the fourth root of x squared is just square root of x. We did that in a previous problem. So square root of x minus x squared dx. And now I can go ahead and integrate this. So it's going to be pi times 2 thirds x raised to the 3 halves power. And again, we found that in a previous problem. Raised to the 3 halves power minus 1 third x cubed. And this is on the interval of 0 to 1. And I'm actually going to go ahead and erase everything here, so make sure you have it written down. So 
So now once we have this, I can rewrite it uh, and I can plug in 1 for x. So it's going to be pi times 2 thirds times 1 raised to the 3 halves power minus 1 third times 1 raised to the third power. And again, I'm skipping the zero step in this one because it would just result in zero minus zero, which is zero. So we can go ahead and simplify this as pi times two thirds, and then one raised to the three halves power is just one, so it's two thirds times one minus one third, and then one cubed is going to be one as well. So then we can go ahead and multiply the two thirds by one and the one thirds by one, and two thirds by one is just two thirds and one-third times one is just one-third leaving us with pi times two-thirds minus one-third now two-thirds minus one-third is just one-third so it's pi times one-third which is pi over three which would be your final answer for this one okay so in this next problem we are asked to do the exact same thing except now we're asked to rotate r3 the region R3 about the line formed by AB. So if we do that, uh, it would look something like this. If we do the rotation, our y equals x line would look something like that. And then our uh, y equals cube root of x, or not cube root, fourth root of x curve would look something like that. And now as we can see, if I pick two, uh, two points here, I can see that I have this circle right here but if I go further back over here, or further to the right in this case, and further to the left in this case, I can see that I actually have a washer shape. And this diagram is kind of a poor representation of that, but I think you get the picture that this is a washer shape. So I'm going to be using the washer method to find the volume, and I'm also going to be using the uh, uh, I'm going to be integrating with respect to the y-axis. So this is going to be volume equals the integral from zero to one of a of y dy and now uh, because we're using the washer method that means that when we write our uh, formula for a of y it's going to be pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared and that's dy at the end right there now I can rewrite this and this time I'm going to define what my inner and outer radii are. So when I define what my outer radius is, it's this uh, this larger circle, circular shape out here. And that's given by 1, because of this line is 1, 1 minus the 4th root of x. So it's going to be 1 minus 4th root of x squared, 4th root of y, I'm sorry, because we're integrating with respect to y. Uh, and in that case it's not even the fourth root of y. So because we're integrating with respect to y we have to redefine our equations in terms of y. So this one is a little bit easier because we have y equals x which means x equals y by that same token, right? This one though y equals fourth root of x and we want to get this in terms of y that means we would raise both sides to the fourth power and we would see that, oh, that was a really bad four. And we would see that x equals y to the fourth. So this would actually be one minus y to the fourth because we've to, we've integrated in terms of y. And then this is going to be minus pi times one minus x squared. And you can't really see it there, but I'll write dy. Now when we go to do 1 minus y fourth, I can uh, just manually do it right here to prove what it is. So 1 minus y fourth, we do 1 times 1, which is 1, and then 1 uh, times negative y to the fourth is negative y to the fourth, and negative y to the fourth times 1 is negative y to the fourth, and when you subtract those two things, you get negative 2y to the fourth and then negative y to the fourth times negative y to the fourth is positive y to the eighth. So this is going to be one minus two y to the fourth plus y to the eighth. 
Now what this is going to be uh, is uh, we can do it manually again. Oh, hold on. This is not supposed to be an x. It's supposed to be a y. My bad. So 1 minus x squared is going to be 1. 1 minus y. I'm sorry. 1 minus uh, y squared is going to be 1 minus 2y plus y squared. So we can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times 1 minus 2y to the 4th plus y to the 8th minus pi minus pi times 1 minus 2y plus y squared and I know this is looking really messy but we'll clean it up in a bit and of course you have to make sure to have your dy tacked on to the end there I'm just going to erase this so I have more room to write over here so I can go ahead and rewrite this and I'm gonna rewrite it over here and I'm gonna bring the pi out before the integral so it's gonna be pi times the integral of 0 to 1 of 1 minus 2y plus y to the eighth minus 1 minus 2y plus y squared dy and notice how I put this whole thing in parentheses here and that's because this negative sign is going to distribute to all of the terms here. So that's going to give us pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus 2y plus y to the eighth minus 1 plus 2y. Oh, I made a mistake here in this first term. This should be 2y to the fourth, not just 2y. Okay, 2y to the fourth. And then we get over here, 1, uh, one plus 2y minus y squared. Right, because we're distributing this negative sign here. So this positive 1 becomes negative 1. This negative 2y becomes positive 2y. And this y squared becomes negative y squared. Uh, and then again, we bring our dy down. And we can see here that our 1 and minus 1 are going to cancel out leaving us with pi times the integral of 0 to 1 of negative 2y squared plus y to the eighth plus 2y minus y squared dy and I'm now going to erase all the stuff up here so make sure you have it written down So now when I rewrite this up here, I can actually solve or I can actually integrate this. So it's going to be uh, pi times negative 2y squared. 2y to, shouldn't it be 2y to the fourth? Yeah, that should be that should be negative 2y to the fourth. I don't know why I wrote negative 2y squared. Okay. So when we integrate this, we know there's going to be a negative sign, and we know we're going to have y to the fifth. So we want to find a coefficient that when we bring the 5 down, it's going to leave us with 2 as our coefficient. And we'll find after some trial and error that that coefficient is 2 fifths. When we bring down the 5, the 5 here and the 5 in the denominator are going to cancel, giving uh, leaving us with 2 and then 5 minus 1 is 4, leaving us with negative 2y to the 4th. Then y to the 8th is going to become 1 ninth y to the 9th. Then 2y, when we integrate that, is going to become y squared. And when we integrate negative y squared, that's going to be negative 1 third y cubed. And this is on the integral of, uh, interval, I mean, this is on the interval of 0 to 1. Now I'm going to skip the 0 step as always, but I'm just going to write down the step where we plug in 1 for y. So that's going to be pi times negative 2 fifths times.
times 1 to the 5th plus 1 ninth times 1 to the 9th plus 1 squared minus 1 third, one one third times 1 cubed. Now I can simplify this even more. I can say 1 to the 5th is uh, just 1, so negative 2 fifths times 1 plus 1 to the 9th is just 1, so 1 ninth times 1. 1 squared is 1, and then 1 cubed is just 1, so negative 1 third times 1. Now I can simplify this even more and say negative 2 fifths times 1 is negative 2 fifths. 1 ninth times 1 is 1 ninth. That 1 is going to stay the same. And then negative 1 third times 1 is negative 1 third. And if you were to go ahead and put these into like denominators, which in this case they would all be 45. So once you get all these denominators to say 45, and if you were to add and subtract and perform these uh, operations here, you'd get that your answer is pi times 17 over 45, or 17 pi over 45, and that would be your answer for that one.